live with the community. This is the Microsoft 365 Development Bi-Weekly Call. Today is March 17th, 2022. My name is David Warner with Catapult, soon to be at Microsoft, and I will be your host for today. Let's talk a little bit about the agenda for our call today. We're going to discuss the latest on the PNP framework and core SDK extension, PNP PowerShell, Yo Teams, Microsoft Graph Toolkit. We're going to talk about a ton of sample opportunities, Microsoft Teams, Power Platform, script samples, and then we're going to have what time? Picture time together, but not before we get to the stars of the day. So the stars of the day after that will be Natalie and Sebastian on updates on the independent publisher connectors uh, and Ethereum connector demo. And then we're going to go to Mark and Tom on a Gmail migration app in Teams from a Microsoft hackathon. Very, very cool. And then Mohammed is going to round it out for us on broadcast information to Microsoft Teams with Power Apps. Let's go over some information about how you can participate in the community. We absolutely love it when you want to participate. You can absolutely demo a technical solution or a pattern. Uh, you can contribute to GitHub and you can provide feedback. We love all of these levels of participation and we're actually here to assist you on all these levels of participation. If you would like to request a demo spot, you can use that aka.ms URL in the chat and on the screen. There are a number of opportunities to contribute within GitHub, which we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, and always reach out directly to us via Twitter or email uh, or LinkedIn if you'd like to provide feedback. Some of the resources we have available to you in the community. Let's start with our videos. There are developer videos and community videos. You can access both at the URLs you see on your screen. We also have a number of open source projects within SharePoint, PNP, Office Dev, and MS Graph, things like PNP PowerShell, CLI for Microsoft 365, and a number of other opportunities. We also have a plethora of sample galleries. There are team samples, SPFX samples, platform, power platform samples, list formatting, we've got ACES, we've got script samples, so many. And this may feel like an abundance of links to have to keep track of, but I promise you only need to keep track of one aka.ms forward slash M365 PNP. That will take you to the latest and greatest availability of all of our resources within the, within the community. So let's start talking about one of the newest resources, and that is script samples. And for that, we'll hand it over to Paul. Thanks, David. So script samples is a place where you can share your PowerShell or Bash scripts for performing tasks with Microsoft 365 services. So we've hit a new milestone uh, this week. So we've now got over 200 scripts in the sample gallery, which is super, super awesome. So thank you to all the contributors that have made this possible. So the types of samples that we have, we have uh, scripts for the Microsoft Graph, CLI for 365, PMP PowerShell, SPM Management Shell, Power Apps, and so on. I've done some updates to the site, so a, a bug fix regarding the URL query, so you can write, uh, you can search for scripts, you can capture that query and share it. I've also added the ability where you can search for commandlets that are used in a sample. So if there's a particular command that you're looking for, you want to see a sample that utilizes that, then you can search for that, and that uh, is supported with PMP PowerShell, CLI, and SVA Management Shell. We've got uh, a few new samples. So we've got uh, samples from Adam, uh, and Nandeep, and Chandani. Um, with a new scenarios and updates there, which is super cool. So thank you very much for your contributions in that space. These are super useful for the community. We've also got badges being issues as well for those that do contribute to this. But if you do need help supporting any contributions, uh, please reach out to, to us or, or to myself, um, and then uh, I can walk you through that or support you in your in your uh, in what you want to submit. So thank you. Uh, over to you, David. Thank you, Paul. Excellent. And congratulations on the 200 plus scripts. Uh, that is a milestone and so many more to come. Thank you to all that contributed. Next up, we've got Sharing is Caring. Now, this is a program that provides hands-on guidance to those that want to get more involved in the community. That may be you'd like to use the the resources that we've identified, like some of the samples, or you'd even like to contribute back. We understand that there may be hurdles in place that may prevent you from doing that successfully or feeling confident about it, but this program is going to provide hands-on guidance to you uh, in walking you through how to do things like submitting your first pull request, presenting on a call, uh, working with GitHub, or setting up your workstation. Like I said, these are hands-on, safe space opportunities for you to get involved, and we will absolutely walk you through. So you can ask any and all questions. We don't record these sessions, and we do set them up with multiple times throughout the month. Now, we are working on the schedule. We ask you to please just be a little uh, patient with us as we get everything set up over the next couple of months. There are a lot of new conferences starting up for in-person opportunities, and we're all excited about that. 
We don't want to compete with that. So be on the lookout over the next few days into the week to get to see some new uh, uh, schedules for these sessions. Once you do contribute to the community, we want to recognize all the amazing work that you're doing and celebrate it. We have started the PNP recognition program. You've all likely seen some of these new and exciting badges in the wild. They are available to anyone and everyone that would like to contribute. So it is powered by Credly. It is absolutely free. We do need you to opt in though. Uh, and it, when you do that, we can connect your GitHub profile to your email address to submit those badges to you. You can formally and officially share them on Twitter, add them to your LinkedIn profile. And because they are powered by Credly, they sit right next to the Microsoft certification. So you can absolutely share them with your employer and your clients and show how involved you are in the community. And we want to thank you and celebrate that. So definitely go get involved and signed up if you've not yet and if you have already you don't need to do it each year it's only a one-time registration and we will track you continually going forward so thank you for everyone that's done that on Tuesday, March 22nd, is our Microsoft 365 platform call. Now, this is a fantastic call because all of the presenters on this call are directly from Microsoft. You are getting it straight from the mothership, if you will. So next Tuesday, we have Rajiv on latest on Microsoft Graph Connector SDK, Anuj on Microsoft Teams meeting app sample with link unfurling, and then Seb will continue his amazing string of Microsoft Graph Toolkit apps with Teams. This has been a nice series. Uh, we joke that he's going to be on Disney Plus soon with his own uh, with his own series, and so we can all subscribe to him, and he'll be back for a season two at some point. I think he'll get renewed. He's been fantastic. So uh, definitely sign up for that. The The URL will get you directly to the download invite, and so aka.ms forward slash m365 dash dev dash call. Let's move into PNP.NET libraries. And for that, I'll hand it over to Bert. Thank you, David. In the PNP.NET uh, side, I think we have some good news for next week. We're planning to finally ship 1.6 from PNP Core SDK and 1.9 from PNP Framework. It took a while, but uh, I think this time is right to, to ship a new release. Uh, and the reason why is because we have a couple of new interesting features added that, that we definitely want to get out in a production release. Uh, they're already available in the nightly builds, um, but uh, always better to have a production version. And one of the things there is uh, support for Viva connections. So uh, PNP Cross DK allows you to uh, read your dashboard, uh, add cards to the dashboard, configure cards. Uh, the same thing that you do with pages and web parts, you can do now with uh, uh, Viva connections dashboard uh, and cards. Furthermore, we have search support. So the search API has been wrapped uh, and you can do like a search. You can do search filtering, search uh, refinements. Uh, all these things are possible in a typed manner. You get back typed objects. So really easy to use. We decided to use the REST implementation, not the graph implementation, because search can also work with app only in REST and not in graph. So I think that's the reason why it's currently REST-based, but in the future, this might uh, change the graph, which is one of the benefits of course, the game. Under the covers, we can change the API implementation while user user will not be impacted. Uh, there is list flow enumeration API support added and several small fixes around taxonomy fields, content type default settings, and so on. More and more people are using PP Cross DK, uh, replacing old code with, with this one. If you have asks about certain things are missing, just put them in the issue list and we try to uh, help you as soon as possible. Now I would like to uh, hand over to Gotham. Gotham will be uh, running the PowerShell slide going forward uh, as of today. Um, so Gotham, take it away. Thanks, Bert. Um, yep, uh, work continues on the PNP PowerShell side. So as Bert mentioned, once the PNP framework and the PNP core SDK get released with the latest version, PNP PowerShell, which is also kind of dependent on those two uh, framework and the SDK will automatically get the latest and the greatest stuff from there. So we'll also are imminently the 1.10 release is quite imminent uh, what is coming up you can check out the change log there tons of new command lists that we have added and bug fixes and of course improvements to the documentation there uh, one quite interesting command lit that we added is the get pnp compatible hub content types so what happens is there is a content type hub and in that content type hub you have certain uh, certain content types that you have uh, created there so if you want to retrieve those uh, content types from the hub and uh, then you can use this particular commandlet to get that list and then you can 
publish them or even unpublish them and then use them in the destination side collections. Uh, one other minor improvement is to the set PNP command. So there there used to be some sort of a confirmation prompt uh, for certain parameters, but if you don't want to use that, so say for example in certain scheduled task or those kind of scenarios you where you don't require user interaction we added a force parameter so you don't need to like press yes or no that kind of confirmation prompt there uh, besides that uh, work continues in the v2 kind of a poc so it is coming up quite uh, we don't have an eta for that but lots and lots of interesting changes there so it will be based on dotnet 6.0 will also require the latest powershell 7.2 uh, we are also working a lot on trying to get rid of the csom which is uh, uh, there so so we yeah lots of uh, basically it's to quite kind of simplify the commands and that kind of stuff so yep work continues there so yeah thanks uh, uh, that's all from my end over to david Awesome, got him, and welcome to the call. Thank you for uh, covering that for us. Excited to see uh, what else there is to share in the future. Thank you, my man. All right, let's move over to Yo Teams with Victor. Thanks, thanks. So, hey everyone, uh, no big updates this time. We've been working on some documentation issues, uh, so that's in the preview branch right now. Hopefully we can merge that into the, the master branch so it's get published on, on the GitHub Docs repo. Uh, we're planning the, the next version. Uh, we don't have any preview version right now, but we have the next version, which is using the new uh, Teams JS SDK version 2, which is promise based and allows for much simpler scaffolding of our code. At the same time, we're also looking into the data statistics, and we're seeing that some of the configurations are not being used as much, such as you adding uh, calling bots or even the localization or the Viva Connections tab. So those are things we are considering deprecating in version 4. Coming, uh, I don't know exactly yet, depends on the, the Teams JS SDK version 2 when that's a GA. But if you have any comments on the deprecation we're planning, uh, go into the GitHub discussion and uh, and continue the uh, conversation there. Uh, February or it's March now already, so March looks really really good uh, in terms of statistics. Uh, we are halfway through and we are most likely beating the previous number, so it is still continuous growth in this space. And as you heard two weeks ago, we turned five years, two weeks ago exactly. So uh, I'm still celebrating on my end and uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Victor. Very awesome telemetry growth here. Really exciting. Uh, thanks for all the hard work on this for everybody that's been involved. Next up is Microsoft Graph Toolkit, and I believe we've got Seb. Yes, we do. Hello, everybody. Um, so we did release our version 2.4 um, last week. Um, lots of improvements regarding uh, our file components, adding some events um, over there, uh, improvements around our people picker, our person component. Um, we also had, a re a, a we fixed a really nasty bug on our Teams MSAL provider that was related to iframes and how Teams handles that. So that's really, really cool. So if you're using Teams in MGT, definitely update your package. It's going to have a seamless experience right there. We also had amazing contributions from the community. So Nathan and Paul, thank you so much for your contributions. Uh, that's great to see the community to contribute back to the Graph Toolkit. Also, we have a brand new Teams FX provider. So if you are into Microsoft Teams, you're more than happy to go on and try our new, and that is in preview, our new Teams FX provider that allows you to benefit from the SSO of Teams directly built into MGT, so that's really, really cool. Finally, if you want to play and geek around, our toolkit, aka.ms slash MGT slash dev, is now a progressive web app, so you can actually install our playground locally on your machine as a progressive web app and, and hack around. There has been some really interesting improvements over there, including giving you a fully blank canvas where you can just start hacking around and add some MGT components there. Really cool stuff. Finally, what's next? We're going to align the toolkit components with the Fluent UI stuff. We're going to have MSAL and Teams provider improvements and might come up fairly soon with a new MGT samples PMP repository. So if you have any samples ooh, uh, ooh. <laughs> down your sleeves, 
feel free to maybe do github.com slash pnp slash mgt dash samples. Maybe you will find something over there and we will also be part of all of our solution gallery that we have for uh, PNP. So have a look at that. Until the next time, back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Seb. And the crowd goes wild on the samples. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah, very <laughs> exciting. Yeah, they will be part of the global sample gallery on adoption.microsoft.com. So thanks for all the hard work there, Seb. Very, very cool. Next up is Microsoft Team Samples with Bob German. Hello. Hi, everyone. Yeah, we have a really cool new sample this week. And uh, hats off to Siddharth Vagasia. Sorry if I say your name wrong, but so happy uh, for your samples. Really appreciate it. So this sample is something that like, I think I want us to install it right away. It's a message forwarder. So if you've ever been in a Teams channel or maybe in a one-on-one -on -one conversation and you're like, I don't want to like bring somebody else into this conversation. I just want to forward this to someone else where some other people are going to collaborate on this topic, whatever. That's what this does. It shows a messaging extension scenario that we don't see a lot of. Messaging extensions is where you extend the menus in Teams and here you can point to a message, click the three dots next to it and forward the message somewhere. It demonstrates an action-based messaging extension with task module, how to implement single sign-on in a messaging extension, and it uses the graph toolkit in a task module with the MGT provider and single sign-on to do the graph call. So uh, brilliant, the MGT makes the code so nice and, and compact and wonderful. And So hats off to MGT and especially to Sadar. Thanks so much for the new sample. Please contribute your samples and back to you, David. Awesome. Thanks, Bob. And again, thank you to everyone for the amazing samples there and community contributions. Next up is Power Platform Samples with April Dunham. Thanks, David. We have three new Power Platform samples this week. So we have a Power Apps Canvas app sample, which is pretty cool by Krishna that shows how you can use SVG scalable vector graphics inside of Canvas apps to have a United States map. So really cool use case here to have an interactive visual using SVGs with the image control and Power Apps. We have two Power Automate samples, one to create a project for the web by Leonard. This is really cool. It shows how we can use Power Automate to provision a Microsoft project for the web. So lots of Dataverse tables getting into the weeds there to provision that. And then finally, we have a last day of the month notification for Power Automate by Mikhail. This one is very interesting. If you want to learn more about expressions inside of Power Automate, so how you can do some complex logic, um, things like that, this is a good sample for you to look at. So lots of use cases for this one. So maybe you want to send out reminders at the end of the month to submit your time or whatever might be really good sample there to show expressions and then um, lots of relevant use cases. And also make sure that we join the Power Platform contributors sharing his caring session coming up next month on April 10th. So uh, welcome all of your samples and hope you can join us for that sharing his caring session. Back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, April. Well, uh, we have entered the time, the time for optional picture time, everybody's favorite time. So turn on those cameras. I'm going to capture it today. So I need to stop sharing the slides and start sharing the together mode. So give me just one moment and I will do that. Uh, and it is loading. All right, I see people coming in. Let me share my camera or my screen. Right, Very good. Woo, seeing those good faces. Still have room for a couple more. All right, great, great. Let me start recording. All right, let's start waving everybody. Show the community how awesome you are. I see Seb, I see Chris down there. <laughs> all right, fantastic. Everybody looks great. You all are amazing. Luisa, love the heart. You rock. All right. All right, let's get back to our slides and our awesome rock star presenters for the day. First up is Natalie and Sebastian. Updates on independent publisher connectors and Infura Ethereum connector demo. Let's hand it over to Natalie. Great, thank you. Just sharing my screen right now. Got it, take it away. Perfect. Great, so I'm here to provide updates on the independent publisher connector program. So for those of you who are not familiar with this, essentially this is a way to publish 
a custom connector to the Power Platform without actually having to own the API for which you're building the connector for. Um, so these connectors, you don't have to actually download them. They're all certified by Microsoft and available within Power Apps, Power Automate, and even Azure Logic Apps, so beyond the Power Platform. No downloads necessary. As long as you have the premium license, you can access these. Um, so just want to celebrate a couple of things today. We have 76 connectors in production, four new ones since we spoke last week. So we had AIHW, My Hospital's Connector by Paul, Emoji Hub by Troy, Inferior Ethereum by Sebastian, who's going to be demoing today, and Word Cloud by TextFist, which is actually also by Troy Taylor. And of course, we have 37 outstanding publishers who have contributed by you know, building a connector, collaborating with others, which we love to see when we see two people or more building a connector together and everyone's here learning together. So it's awesome to see that. For the next Power Platform Integration Labs call, I think I briefly touched upon this last time, but I created an AKMS link for you all to sign up if you're interested. The Power Platform Integration Labs call is basically a people coming together to learn, ask, and build. So we are doing a lot of demos and you know com conversational topics on connectors, gateways, data flows, essentially anything that has to do with integrations. The next call, which is the last Wednesday of this month, is going to be on, the main topic is going to be on triggers. So polling triggers, webhook triggers, so especially if this is something you're interested in, looking forward to having you all there. And in terms of the connectors in our pipeline, we have 42. Here are all of them here. Um, we got a couple of new ones this week, including National Park Service. Um, so that's definitely specific to the US, but it's awesome to see that. And we can now move on to the demo on Inferior Ethereum. Sebastian, take hey, it away. That's cool. Thank you very much. Let me quickly share my screen and let me know if you see it. Yes. Brilliant. OK, let's kick this off. Thank you very much. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So whatever time zone you have, I hope you do well. Thank you all for allowing me to quickly present my work on the Infura Ethereum Independent Publisher Connector. So that's quite a long name, so don't expect me to say it too often. My name is uh, Sebastian and I am a digital workplace architect um, for Swisscom in Switzerland, as the Swiss part of the company name obviously indicates. So if you haven't already, feel free to contact me on uh, LinkedIn. I'm more than happy to get to know new people. So before we look into the connector, I pretty briefly introduce the Ethereum blockchain and what's required to communicate with it. Also, we look at the uh, challenges I have faced during the implementation of the custom connector and how I solved it. And then we go into a quick system demo and sum it up at the end. All right, let's do this. So what is the Ethereum blockchain? Ethereum is an open source blockchain based distributed ledger. It is powered by software running on a network of computers or nodes that ensure data and programs, also called smart contracts, are replicated and run on all computers on the network without a central intermediary. So Ethereum can be used for sending and receiving cryptocurrencies and stablecoins, uh, experience decentralized finance such as lending and borrowing, trade uh, non-fungible tokens known as NFTs these days, and participate in online communities and decentralized autonomous organizations, in short, DAOs. So essentially every node talks to many other nodes and the API used in such a peer-to-peer -peer distributed ledger world is different from what we Microsoft folks usually expect. It's not a RESTful API which complicates matters a bit. So instead JSON RPC is used and JSON RPC is a stateless lightweight protocol. It is transport agnostic in what the uh, concept can be used over uh, sockets, over HTTP or other ways. So, however, it is designed to be simple, but not necessarily intuitive as RESTful APIs and heavily relies on the documentation. As you may guess, that's not a perfect fit for a local platform such as the Power Platform with its generic connector approach. So. Also, 
if you want to build apps on top of the Ethereum blockchain, um, talking to a peer-to-peer -peer network is not very practical. So for that, some cloud providers expose JSON RPC endpoints uh, of the network as a single public API on the web so that app developers can consume the network as a service. One of those services is Infura. Infura API provides instant access over HTTPS to the Ethereum network and therefore is a good entry point for traditional applications trying to communicate with the Ethereum blockchain. So this is uh, also how I built the first version of my connector for Infura and the Ethereum blockchain. Due to the nature of JSON RPC, there were some challenges I had to tackle since the Power Platform is very much focusing on REST fuel uh, APIs and open API based services, and most of the UX relies on that fact as well. Unfortunately, JSON RPC isn't made for that purpose, so we need to solve three unique challenges. First, JSON RPC has only one endpoint and no path templates. While we still need dedicated actions in the platform for a good UX, we need to route every call to the same URL. Second, the method to invoke is identified through a post body and uh, follows the documentation instead of a, a standardized approach. And the JSON RPC parameters can be named or positional and there is no exact pattern, so you need to decide on a per method basis. And third, everything in the Ethereum world is expressed as a byte string or a hex string. This is unusable for the average user, so the connector logic should convert from byte string to string or decimal values. So let's look at how we solve the problem in the connector by walking through a quick um, demo. And for that, I'm quickly switching to my uh, other screen. Give me a second. OK, can you see the platform flow? Loaded looks great, yep. Oh, brilliant. OK, so just a quick proof that the connector is really showing up in the platform. So you really search for Infura. Ethereum independent publisher, and let's uh, pick the uh, get balance. That's just to check how much ETH I do have. Of course, you can use it as, as you as you know how it goes. You put in an Ethereum address, and with all of this, it's very simple. UX is uh, straightforward. Of course, you can do something like sending yourself a, a daily uh, balance sheet where you have your ETH balance, the current uh, block in the connector or in the Ethereum blockchain block number, and also the uh, gas price, for instance. So that's basically it. This is very much straightforward. OK, let's quickly look at the um, connector in here. Um, as I said before, we have to reroute everything to a single endpoint. And for that, we can easily go for the uh, routing policies. This routes the request to a single endpoint. And as you can see, there is an Infura project ID, which is required to talk to the service um, as a connection parameter. So this is the, defined in the um, API properties JSON file. So when you create a connection to this connector, it asks you for the project ID, you enter it, and that's it. So every call is routed to this single endpoint. Now the magic pops in when we uh, talk about the uh, custom code. And as I understood from Natalie, my connector is one of the first to use custom code as an independent publisher connector. And inside this connector, we do all uh, the heavy lifting, so to say. So we check for the, the different uh, operations. We do some uh, conversion uh, um, according to the documentation. We have some patterns to uh, convert stuff from um, byte strings to uh, normal strings or decimal values use and I think this is a good example on how to use custom code to do the heavy lifting inside the connector and provide the best UX possible. All right, so that's how I solved most of the challenges. Let's quickly look at what we can do now with the connector. So for instance, we could build like a MetaMask clone. MetaMask is a well-known wallet for the Ethereum ecosystem. We just add the Infura connector in here the connection, so and it shows up in here. And if I hit refresh, it should take a couple of seconds and until everything works. You can see I'm a really rich guy, uh, roughly about uh, $2. So it's not that much, but this is how you can talk to the Ethereum blockchain and for instance, get your uh, balance. Another um, use case, of course, is using it as a bot. So what's the current gas price 
and I think you can guess the response. That should be uh, the current gas price. That's basically how much a transaction on the Ethereum uh, blockchain uh, costs right now. While this is a bit fixed for the demo, uh, this value really comes from the Infura endpoint and is real time. So basically, that's already uh, it. So let me quickly jump back to the presentation. A quick summary of my learnings. So basically model any API as if it were RESTful, regardless if it is RESTful. So you have seen that for the JSON RPC one. Then use custom code and transform policies to translate in between. When you are in doubt, I think UX should come over connector complexity. That's my personal opinion. And my personal learning is bottom line, the Power Platform can talk to any API. This includes legacy or future systems such as the Ethereum blockchain. And there is one last disclaimer. The current version uh, has a little bug in the deployment pipeline. Natalie and the team are on it. So please don't expect it to work right now, but it should work in the next couple of days. And that's it from my side. I hope it makes all sense for you guys. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here for questions if there are any. Thank you. Awesome, Sebastian and Natalie both. Thank you very, very much. We'll let those questions trickle into the uh, chat, but awesome, really, really cool stuff. And congratulations on being the first C-sharp connector in there. That is very, very cool. Thank Next you. up Thank is you. Tom and Mark on Gmail Migration App in Teams from the Microsoft Hackathon. So let's kick it off to Tom and he'll get us started. Thanks, David. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to uh, be here with Mark, and I want to talk a little bit about the inspiration. So, anybody have an email inbox that's out of control? And mine is right now, honestly. I think there are emails I need to respond to from uh, five days ago at the least. I had a colleague at LinkedIn who was uh, in a bit of uh, concern over her lack of control. She tweeted, don't expect to hear from me today. I just got migrated from Gmail to Outlook. As you know, uh, Microsoft acquired LinkedIn five years ago, and they were using Gmail. And she uh, was part of the beta wave of moving into Outlook. They moved her inbox. And they didn't move the filters she had for all of the distribution lists she was on. So she couldn't find any of the emails she needed to read and respond to from all the uh, junk that was in her distribution list that she didn't normally read. So I looked into this and tried to understand how I could help her. I thought there must be some tool that would do this. I couldn't find any. So I did a quick proof of concept in plain JavaScript five years ago at that first Microsoft hackathon. And I tried for the last few years to see if I could get it integrated into the product. And I apparently failed to make the business case. So I pivoted last fall when I saw that uh, MVPs were now included in the Microsoft Global Hackathon for the first time and pitched the idea and luckily found uh, a, a group of contributors led by Mark, really, on the strong contributions, and also Sid, who Bob had pointed out had submitted a team sample uh, earlier this week. So yeah, I'll hand it off to Mark voice for voice a demo. Cool, cool. Right. right, so so th this is you know, some Gmail filters that I've set up here with basically some filters that do most of the things that you might want filters to do. And the basic problem we have is that, yeah, we, you know, we, we work for somebody who's been acquired and we're all shifting over from Gmail to M365. Um, we want to get these, these copied over. So we want to either export these filters in some way or just get them copied over so that although our email has been set up and our folders have been set up, we don't have the, the, these filters going. Um, so what we did is we set up Teams app to do this. Um, the essential point here is that you know, you're already in Teams. You're already authenticated into Microsoft 365 once you're in there. And it means that in theory, this is a nice easy place for you to go and load up you know, a you know, sort of a, a tab in this case, 
which allows you to do this import. So, yeah, it's a, it's it's a, it's, a, it's essentially very very simple looking app. So you know, you come in, you can either use that export and simply just upload the XML here. Um, what we've also got is a built-in fetch Gmail here. So what that will do if I hit that, that will fire up the normal Google OAuth flow, go off to my Gmail account and actually pull those filters in. So crossing his fingers. Hey. Um, so you can see here what we've got. Um, we're using the you know the fluent UI controls here. So that's pulled in those th three rules. We can turn them on or off. Um, and you know essentially that that that's pretty much the guts of it is you know it will go off and fetch your filters and now if I hit move them <laughs> right, I'm wearing green. I'm in Ireland. <laughs> it's St. Patrick's Day. The luck of the Irish should trump the demo gods. <laughs> I've seen this work. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I promise you this does work. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to try and try and debug that now. But essentially, that just will take you to a final screen that says, "Hooray! You've imported three filters. Click here to see them." And when you click here to see them, it will pop you through to your rules pop up in Outlook, and you should then be able to see filters and adjust them and show them. Um, I should point out at this point, I am an Azure MVP. I have not a clue what's been going on in the rest of this call. Um, so part of, part of the point of this, <laughs> this particular sample is how easy it is in theory to get all this stuff going when you know nothing about 365 or graph at all. Um, you know, my main expertise coming into this was, was, was React, which is where, where I came in. So we'll, we'll, sw we'll switch over to, to, the, to the React bit because that's, <laughs> that's a bit easier to go through. Um, so yeah, essentially this is a fairly simple Teams Toolkit app. So yeah, we've installed the Teams Toolkit Visual Studio code extension, and that scaffolds something that looks pretty much like this. So yeah, we've got our library stuff in here for using graph and things already there. So yeah, you know, we've got the two things there. So we've got a filter upload there, which is a fairly simple thing, you know, not really related to 365 at all. Um, the slightly more interesting one here is this Gmail fetch. So what this is able to do is we can use a standard React Google login, feed it in a Fluent UI button, as you saw, that all connected up nicely, gives gives us the thing. Yeah, we've got an error message here, which is an error message control, which you just saw, in fact, which shows <laughs> a, <laughs> an official Teams alert. But you know, the nice thing about this is that you know we can go in, we can pop up the login and get the OAuth going within the Teams app. Um, this works reliably on a standard web Teams. Um, depending on the version of your desktop client sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't uh, tom has seen it working either in the desktop client but with the with the, with the version that i've got that, that that bit doesn't work so you, you you know you may find yourself having to use that backup of importing the export um but what we can do here is, you know we can just go off within here go and fetch off fetch all the information from each of the criteria and turn that into a standard format which will then pull in so We've got here, you know, that's the bit where we actually display everything. So that's pulling through all your various, you know, text items for each of the things that are in there. So you can see you know, all the things that we're displaying there. And then in, you know, the, the final stage where we actually pull it in, you know, when it's working, um, you know, we've got a fairly simple thing here where we just use that use graph library thing that the Teams Toolkit gave us, it pulled, comes in, we then just go and get a couple of folder IDs and rules from the graph, and then we can just go through each of the filters, turn that into the format that Outlook is expecting, and then just go and post that up as a new message rule. So yeah, in theory, we've just got a few few lines of Graph API code there, and hey presto, we've in, imported all, all our all our fil Gmail filters as Outlook rules, and then you know 
that that's the bit that you didn't see, but migration complete, head off to Outlook, go and see the rules. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much you know what what's going on in there. Um, I did put in a PR for this. Um, I'm told that the person who was checking the PR couldn't get it up and running, so I'm going to add some extra magic and throw a dev container in there. So hopefully, when you go and get this from the from the samples repo, there'll be a dev container in, which means that you can just tell teams to run it in the dev container, and that will automatically pull in the toolkit extension should, for you and have everything. Probably set up. talk. It's got some connection to whatever tenant you were debugging in, so you might want. We should talk offline. You might Thanks, not want. There's some maybe some stuff in there you don't want to ship. So just let's let's talk. Yeah, we'll, we'll get yeah, that. If, if, if I get a dev container around it, then we can make be sure that it all works perfectly on anybody else's machine because that's what, that's what containers are for. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get that. I get that. That's great. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's it for the demo. Um, if anybody has any questions, or if Tom has anything further he would like to say, I, 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 I should just say this. Thanks again to Sid and Rewitt who did some of the code for this. I, I just kind of pasted it together and glued, did, did, did all the glue and added a bit of UI to it. So thanks to them and thanks to Microsoft for letting us in the hackathon this, this year. Yes, yeah, so it's quite quite a privilege to be involved in the, in the Microsoft internal hackathon. Yeah, great. Thanks, Mark. I just want to encourage you, if you're an MVP or a regional director, please join us in the next uh, Microsoft Global Hackathon. I was really excited to be able to uh, hack with three uh, MVPs that last year. And uh, if you're not an MVP, keep up these community contributions and uh, and reach for it. Hmm. Very uh, yes cool. Chat, so yes, that was purely client side script. Not <laughs> That, 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 that whole thing is React, so you don't have to host it on an app service or anything. You could, in theory, just shove it up in storage or static web app or something, and that would all be all be cool for when you're actually deploying it live. Awesome. Yeah, that's very cool. And, and I, Mark, I appreciate you mentioning that the M365 uh, landscape is kind of new to you as an Azure developer. It shows how ease the ease of extensibility there is uh, within Absolutely. that landscape. So uh, really thank you for sharing that and pointing that out. All right, great stuff. Yeah, Next really up. Really cool demo. Thanks, guys. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, next up is broadcasting information to Microsoft Teams with Power Apps by Mohammed. Go ahead and take it away, Mohammed. Sure, sure, David. So let me share my screen. So let's start with who am I? Uh, so I'm Mohammed Ashik Falil. I'm, I'm located in uh, uh, Stockholm, uh, Sweden, and I'm a solution architect working predominantly with Microsoft 365 stack. And uh, when it comes to uh, extending its feature, I, I use Azure. And I'm also a, a Microsoft MVP in the business applications category. Then these are my uh, social handles. So what am I going to speak about? Uh, so it's a, it's a solution which I've built using Power Apps, so which has the capability to broadcast messages, uh, which is intended for multiple teams. Uh, so what this is different from, we are only having connectors in Microsoft which can which can send. Uh, message from from power automate to a team so this one is something which will help you if you're not a member uh, you will be able to still uh, send a message from this app uh, member of a team team i meant this app is going to send a adaptive card in a, in a team's channel and it's going to also send an active uh, activity uh, feed for priority messages custom activity feed uh, it, it is a completely uh, no-code solution. It is almost similar to uh, the company communicator app, uh, the team samples which we have got, but it has it, it has got few other uh, functionalities like creating uh, uh, creating a group chat, etc. But this one is only it, it has got the capability only to uh, send in an adaptive card to a team, and it is a no-code solution. So no no Azure functions, nothing. Everything can be done within the Power Platform. So. It, it, it has a power app, as I said, and it has got a power automate and also a custom uh, Teams manifest, which I've created from the Teams developer uh, portal. So let me quickly uh, show the demo so that you, you will uh, understand what I'm speaking about. So let me go to the app. So this is the uh, custom app uh, in Power App. So I've got a, 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 a sample scenario which can send message to 
different different stores in in the world. So I've created a couple of sample stores uh, uh, to where I have to communicate messages. I'm starting it. So I, as a communicator now, uh, I'm going to compose a message and send it across the team where I'm not actually a member. Uh, right. So I'll click on a new message. So first I should be selecting the region of the store where I have to send this message. Uh, Europe and then uh, Sweden, uh, the country and the stores. So I've got three stores which is under uh, uh, Sweden uh, country. I'm selecting store number two and store number four. So I as a communicator now selected to which uh, stores I have to send send a message and I'm um, clicking next and now I have, I'm, I'm composing the message. So PNP demo. Podcaster and summary. Let me quickly take it. Take it from a Laura Mipson. So the message is done and I. I, I, I as a communicator, I would like to send a, a push notification on the user's mobile. Uh, that the store uses mobile. Um, so I'm selecting the priority as on and the author. You can actually change it uh, and then say it as. Uh, internal communications team, for example, I'm just leaving it, leaving it with my name and you can also add additional links to this uh, message. More info. I'm adding my blog post. And you can also uh, upload an image. Uh, it's 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 not it, it is not a mandatory field, but if you still want to send a message, send a message with an image, uh, you can do it. So I'm selecting it and now save next. Uh, so you, you you will see a preview on what you have uh, selected to which stores you have uh, chosen to send this message to. And also you can uh, see the preview of the actual message, the image and also the message here. We have three options, save it as draft, publish later. So I'm going to for this uh, for, for the for this demo, I'm, I'm clicking on publish. Yeah. So the message is published and in a couple of uh, minutes it's gonna appear on the two, two teams which I've selected. So let me to make it faster. Let me quickly. Do this and go to the teams. Since the, uh, we, have, we have chosen the priority as. Uh, uh, on so that that's going to be the activity feed. So you can see now here uh, that uh, there, there is two activity, right? So the stores which I've selected is store number two and store number four. So I can also see the message here, PNP demo broadcaster and, and also the store number four. The message is here. Since the message is priority, there is also an activity feed with a deep link to this uh, uh, team's conversation post and the other one here which is deep link to the other uh, channel. And you can see here uh, I have made this uh, uh, conversation uh, as, a, as a publisher. Posted on on the information channel, so with, with this solution, so you can post this adaptive card uh, to any standard team channel except the private channel. So this is the demo. Let me now quickly go uh, look at it on how I've built it. So here, as as you have seen, we have got a power app, which is connected to a SharePoint uh, SharePoint list. Uh, so this particular SharePoint list has got all the details about the team. So whatever teams I have, which uh, as a as a communicator or, or as a publisher, uh, which I have chosen, so all the details about that particular uh, uh, stores or or the team. It is it is stored in this list uh, for what details is it, it, it has the group ID, the 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 team channel ID, the the team ID, etc. Uh, right. So after after it is published from Power App, it goes to a list uh, which stores all the broadcast messages. So this whenever there is a new item in this list, a power automate gets gets triggered, which will which will use a boss bot rest API connector to 
to send that adaptive card. So we are not using an Azure, Azure function to do this or, or, or bot connector SDK to do this. So we are rather doing it with the help of uh, Power Automate. So once this uh, uh, REST API is, is posted, the adaptive card in the team, it's, it's going to get the uh, get the message ID, whatever the message ID uh, for that uh, adaptive card message, and it, it's going it, to it's using a, a graph API endpoint to send the adaptive card. So that is how we are here. So let's now quickly look at the solution components. So what it has got. So for the first one, as I said, so all the all the teams, all the store teams has got uh, Teams app installed. Uh, I've not I've not done any coding here. I've, I've just went to the uh, developer uh, portal, Teams developer portal, and created a manifest. It is it is all from the interface. Uh, so there is there is a bot. There are there are a couple of features on the Teams app manifest. One is a bot which is responsible for sending in the uh, sending in the adaptive card, and and second one is it has got a feature to send in the activity feeds, which I've just uh, seen for priority messages, and. It, there are actually multi, uh, uh, different ways to install the app once it is developed. Uh, the, the the first way is as an owner of a team, you can install it by yourself. Or if you want to have this as an enterprise scale app, if you're having like 5,000 stores or, or, or uh, uh, 10,000 stores, so you can install the bot, uh, the, this particular Teams app using a graph API to all of those selected teams. Right, and then we have got an Active Directory app. Uh, so this app, this particular app is responsible for creating, for sending the activity feed. And we have got a, a, a SharePoint, couple of SharePoint online list. One is for, as I talked about in the previous slide, one, one is for storing the team's information. And the second one is for uh, uh, storing the actual message. So, uh, and then a Power App, uh, which has got the interface for the communicators or for the publishers. And then uh, uh, there, there are some certain connections which happens to this uh, list. And then a, a Power Automate, uh, which uses a couple of uh, premium connectors, HTTP, HTTP connectors to send the adaptive card and also to uh, call the graph API. So uh, this one, I have used a Power Automate, a premium action, but if you want to avoid avoid uh, premium connectors, you can also uh, go the Azure uh, Logic, Logic app route. So here, so this is the graph API endpoint which I've used for the activity feed, and the the Diwali permission which I've added uh, on that uh, Active Directory app is team activity dot send. So I've used this particular endpoint, a graph API teams team ID channels, uh, right, and then the message ID. Uh, so these are the details which has been used to uh, send that activity feed. So let's now quickly. Go through the solution on a very quick manner. So Power Apps, as I said, it has got just the interface, so nothing, not, uh, uh, not, nothing complex. But let me quickly show the Power Automate. So whenever an item is created on a SharePoint list, it gets triggered. So we have an automated trigger. So here uh, we are getting the store details. So uh, whatever stores we have selected or, or the publisher has selected, so that the, that information we are we are getting it here. We are storing that as a JSON, and we are getting certain information like the channel ID, the team ID, etc. And this is where we are generating the the bot access token. So this particular endpoint is something once the token is generated, uh, the it, it is valid for one whole day, 24 hours. And once a bot token is generated, uh, which has been used to send in the adaptive card. So here, this this action. Uh, so you can, you can see the endpoint details. It is smva.trafficmanager.net. And uh, so th this particular endpoint is based on the tenant, on the on the team tenant. If if the tenant is located in EMEA, it'll be it'll be like EMEA, right? So you can, it, but it also works with other locations, uh, right? So here, so this is the body. So the, the the body has got the adaptive adaptive card. So I have I built adaptive card from the adaptive card uh, designer, uh, right? So that is it. And here you can you can see whatever token we have generated from the REST API endpoint, the token which are which we are adding it here, uh, right? And then the message ID we are we are getting the 
the that unique message idea of that teams and teams conversation post and at the last we are based on the priority and if it is priority uh, we are sending in the activity feed if it's not we are not we're not doing it so this one we are generating the graph api token and we are sending it so that is it and i've got references i've written already two blog posts there's going to be two more additional blog posts if you wanted to just follow whatever i've just said over to you david awesome mohammed thank you very very much well, thank you to all our presenters, but I also wanted to just make a little special shout out to Sebastian, Mark, and Mohammed. All three are first time presenters on this call, I believe. And so that is incredible and awesome. So thank you all. We welcome everyone to present on these calls for any of your samples or technical demos. So please don't hesitate to reach out uh, if you would like to present. Uh, again, thank you all for that. The recording of this call will be available in 24 hours on the Microsoft 365 Community PNP YouTube channel, aka.ms forward slash m365pnp-videos. You can subscribe so that you can always get updates to when they are released. Uh, it will show up in the chat, uh, but you won't be able to download it. So make sure you look for that listing in YouTube. You can follow us on Twitter at Microsoft 365 Dev at M365PNP. Our next Microsoft 365 General Dev call, this exact call, March 31st at 7 a.m., but double check those ICS files. That's the best way to make sure, just in case there's still some oddity. I think we'll be safe by then. It's two weeks out, so we should be good. Next, Viva Connection SharePoint Framework call, March 24th at 7 a.m. Pacific. Uh, of course, you can get those ICS files at aka.ms forward slash m365pnp. We also have a host of other community calls available. The platform call, as mentioned, aka.ms m365-dev-call. That is directly from Microsoft Teams, uh, the teams within Microsoft, I should say. So you're getting it straight from the source. We've got adaptive cards, Microsoft Identity Platform, Office add-ins, and Power Apps community calls available as well. And of course, the two PNP community calls we just discussed. You can get access to all of these at aka.ms forward slash m365pnp. Thank you everyone for the excellent chat communication and all of your contributions. We appreciate everything you do. Keep up the great work you rock. Thank you so much. Have a great week.